It's Friday, July 22nd, and this is now on HNN. The victims start to, to shout and to cry. HPD opens an attempted murder investigation after a man's hand was allegedly cut off with a sword. That's not a hard question. And and I've told you the answer is I released the records. Leading Democratic and GOP candidates for governor and lieutenant governor make their pitch to voters in the HNN super debate. He betrayed his oath of office. The January 6th Select Committee lays out a case that former President Trump chose not to act to defend the Capitol in the early hours after it came under attack. I'm Natalie Brand with the highlights and revelations from the latest primetime hearing. We've got all these stories plus Stray, the video game where you play as a cat. It's breaking the internet. We'll show you what it's all about coming up on This Is Now. We get started with this breaking news. The State Department of Health has identified three additional cases of monkeypox in the state. That brings the total number of cases in Hawaii to 11. According to DOH, two of those new cases are Oahu residents. Officials have determined that one of those cases is tied to a previously reported case. The third individual was diagnosed on the Garden Isle, and that person's case was associated with travel outside the state. Look for more on this story on your H&N digital platforms. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for watching. This is now lots of news to get to today, but first we start with this. An investigation is underway after a man's hand was allegedly cut off with a sword outside a Waikiki store. Casey Lund has the latest. This all unfolded here at this 7-Eleven in the 1900 block of Kalakaua. Witnesses tell me it started with an altercation inside the store between an employee and another man. Eventually, that altercation came outside into the parking lot where it took a violent and gruesome turn. He just took his sword and just cut his hand. I was shocked. Michael Suisa visits Waikiki often with his family from Switzerland. He likes to walk around late at night and came down to the 7-Eleven to get ice cream around midnight. What I saw, I went out, and then what I saw, the, the victim start to, to, to shout and to cry, and then I look at the, the floor, then I saw uh, that his half hand on the floor. Suisa says after he saw the man's hand on the ground, the 7-Eleven employee with the sword took off running, but police eventually caught up with him. This guy that attacked him, he served me twice for the last two days, and he was very nice and he was very kind, and like something crazy happened to him. Mentally, something crazy happened to him. He served me. I, I, I remember that very well. He was very kind to me. So it's a shock that someone like that does something so horrible. It should be an indication that a 7-Eleven's got an employee that has to carry a sword. What, you know, what is really going on in this neighborhood? Neighbors in this area say they're not at all surprised that this happened. Not really. I mean, like I said a little earlier, it's just a matter of time before we start seeing body parts and bodies around. And have things gotten worse in Waikiki since you've lived here? Absolutely. Things have gotten much worse. They seem to be escalating day by day. Um, you got to go in, you know, when the sun starts setting and uh, not go out again until the sun rises. They say this stretch of Ina Road intersecting with Kalakaua is a breeding ground for crime and violent behavior. This road is notorious for drugs, drug users, and um, as you can see, the, the disposal units use this as a staging. And whenever you have all these dumpsters out here, you got a lot of folks that are dumpster divers. So we have a lot of, I like to call them homeless criminals. I think mental health is, is tantamount to this problem and also maybe more of a police presence. I spoke with a security guard who works in this area. He tells me he knows the 7-Eleven employee as well as the gentleman that he got in an altercation with. He says the 7-Eleven employee has had problems with him in the past and he was worried that things might turn physical. Reporting in Waikiki, I'm Casey Lund. For now, we'll send things back to you.
Witnesses described trying to stop Brian Tejada Castillo, a Hawaii-based Marine who is accused of killing his wife, Donna Alotevi, on the H3 freeway Wednesday evening. Stephanie Lum has more. We're hearing from one of the Good Samaritans who tried to save the woman who was murdered on the H3 freeway. George Smith says he was returning from pig hunting with his family and friends when he saw what he thought was a man beating a woman on the side of the road near the Kapa'a Quarry transfer station. He and another man pulled over and realized the suspect had been stabbing the woman multiple times. I ran over there and I told the guy, let her go. The guy that would flag me down came behind that guy, he, he got able to get, he, he got that guy down and I just seen blood all over her, you know? She was just all full of blood all on her chest and everything and I was like, oh no. So I told her, you know, I'm gonna rush you to the hospital. So I got her for some odd reason. He, he got up, that guy got up, he reached for that knife and he came right behind me, you know, and it was scary for, it was, I was scared because all I heard is run. And I seen a guy grab that knife and poke himself in his neck twice. The 27 year old woman died at the hospital. We learned she was pregnant and married to the suspect who was an active duty Marine with a third literal combat team. He was transported to the hospital in serious condition. HPD has not yet identified him as charges are pending. Friends say the couple had been having marital problems and that the military ordered the man to not contact his wife. It's not uncommon for us to hear uh, examples from spouses or me military members that the commending officer sort of minimized the seriousness of what was going on um, or gave him multiple chances and didn't really provide the kind of support she needed when she reached out. So that could have a dissuasive effect on others to not reach out. The military did fail her this time, um, and this should be a real eye-opener, not only to the spouses that are on base, um, but just the whole military community in general. Friends say the victim was pregnant with her current boyfriend as she and the husband were separated. The Marines released a statement saying that they will comply with the investigation. If you or anyone else you know is a victim of domestic violence, you can call the national hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. With time running out to change voters' minds before the primary election, leading candidates for governor and lieutenant governor duked it out last night in the H&N Super Debate as they laid out their plans to tackle big issues facing the state from the cost of living to climate change. It's really important that businesses and individuals, we must look at our behavior and marry them to the policies that government puts in place. Businesswoman Vicky Cayetano, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green, and U.S. Representative Kai Kahele focused on the high cost of living and soaring inflation, but also questioned one another on ethics. You know, the Lieutenant Governor does not like being questioned, but our voters deserve honesty. They deserve character and integrity. Release the records. Release the information, Lieutenant Governor. I don't understand why that's so hard. It's not difficult. I've shared exactly what I do. I provide direct health care as a physician. These are just, of course, uh, misdirection attacks because my opponent has nothing really to offer us as governor. He has no record. He served just one year in the Congress and then quit on us. And so all along, I'm trying to be upbeat and positive about our issues, and I hope we'll spend the rest of our time talking well, about it. The people issues. need to know whether or not you profited off of the pandemic through your private LLC. That's not a hard question. And, and I've told you the answer is and I released the records. Thank Mrs. Cayetano? Can't do it. You have the last word. I, I, I would agree. I mean, if there's nothing to hide, you should release the records. Yes, and I, I will add finally. I hope uh, the people I of hope, Hawaii. I hope that the I hope that the congressman realizes that this approach is not helping because he shouldn't speak over other people. You know what? I will also clarify. I'll call out that of your line. I Thank you, Congressman. You're uh, and it's, it's inappropriate to call a person a liar, Mahilani. I hope you'll uh, call that into question. On Hawaii's cost of living, the lieutenant governor said he wants to focus on affordable housing and institute a new tax on visitors. 
Kahele, meanwhile, supported lower property taxes, and Cayetano said she would institute a general excise tax moratorium for food, medicine, and drugs for those who make $100,000 or less. And I put out a 10-point plan on climate change to have a climate impact fee, which would be $50 for every individual that travels to the state of Hawaii over age 12. This can generate between $350 and $400 million per year, and that will be the mechanism that we will use to pay for the roads that are falling into the water, to pay for moving hotels back, though those investors should pay for it themselves in partnership with the state for state resources. You know, this, I need to address what the lieutenant governor said, because he said it now three times. It's this climate impact fee that he talks about. We don't know if that's even constitutional whether it violates the U.S. Constitution to levy a climate, climate impact fee against a tourist that comes to Hawaii. That doesn't help reduce tourism. That just continues to tax the tourists that are already coming here. That's not going to disincentivize tourists from coming here. And so, you know, I, I think uh, that's something we need to address. Sure. Yes, it is constitutional. It's being also done in many countries across the uh, world. Europe has just started it as well. Uh, you've We're seen not Europe. Yeah, I'm aware of who we are, uh, Congressman. We are Hawaii. And we also are seeing the President of Palau. I, I spoke with the President of Palau. We're not Palau. Are we going to continue in this? Go meeting? ahead, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Mahalani. Well, I'd like to just comment on that. And I think what Congressman is saying, Lieutenant Governor, is while well intentioned, you know, Hawaii is not a country. This may be something that the federal level has to be looked at. Europe, Palau, those are all countries. So I'm not sure that it's constitutional. I think that's what the point that he's making. The Republican debate for governor was far tamer, with the candidates appearing to take pains to avoid criticizing each other's positions. But her but question was his I experience. I, I, what I, I what do you think see, about his experience? I want to see how proud I am of uh, both BJ and Heidi for stepping up to the plate. All right, Duco Yona, it's actually now your turn yeah. for a question. And as a result of that, I have no questions for either BJ or Heidi. All right, Mr. Penn, what is your question? Okay. And, you know, I, I'm the same here. I have no beef with Duke or Heidi. Duke my, didn't close my businesses. Duke, Duke didn't master children in the DOE. But you're running I, against each other for governor. You know, we are running as each other for governor. And I look at them as two soldiers right next to me. You know, I, I become governor. I will, I will love to call Duke and say, hey, uncle, I need, I need some advice. You can help me out. <laughs> hey, Heidi, you with me? You coming with me anyway? You, you know, I, Heidi Suniyoshi, what do you think about these two candidates having no question for you is, do you think that's part of their strategy? I, I, I just feel the best part of having these type of um, forums and being able to speak and express is to be able to engage in dialogue. So I appreciate the fact that neither of them want to ask questions, but I think that engaging in these type of debates are important for the process. Here's H&M political analyst Colin Moore. You know, I mean, they clearly demonstrated that they think the real opposition here is the Democratic Party. I think Duke Iona was doing this as a matter of strategy. He doesn't want to anger any people who might support B.J. Penn. I think B.J. Penn just was being very genuine. And you saw that moment of real connection with voters. I mean, I think that was one of the, the most memorable moments of the debate when he says, hey, I'll just call you, Duke. But the GOP candidates did tackle some tough issues. In Hawaii, women have the rights to abortion and contraception. As governor, would you protect those rights? You can go first. There's nothing to protect because everything is status quo right now in the state of Hawaii. I understand nothing has changed, but would you try to change that? Would I try to change it? That's not my function. That's the legislature's function. And I'll, I'll, as governor, though, I, I do have the, the power of veto, and I'll see what happens in regards to what the legislature does if they do do anything, and we'll, we'll act accordingly. What does that mean? What's that your means, position? That means that I will see what the legislature does. If the legislature does something, then we'll look at it. Mr. I, Penn, I, would you protect abortion and contraception yeah. rights? Yeah, it's a, fa it's a fact what he said. He knows we're gridlocked. We run into the, we run into the legislation, and we're talking about a one-party system in there, and, and they control the whole thing. Everybody has to remember that the, legis the legislature is what controls this. Ms. Suniyoshi. Thank you. As it goes for protecting women's rights to abortion and rights to contraception, as governor, as was stated earlier, it doesn't change for our state the issue that was happening at the Supreme Court. As governor, I am pro-life. As far as abortion goes, I do support what it was intended to do when there is a pregnancy that can't go to full term, whether it be for the fetus's health or for the health of the mother, but would like us to move away from this discussion as just abortion or not abortion, because there are many, many other options for our women out there.
In the third debate of the night, the Democratic candidates for lieutenant governor tried to make an impression on voters in a very crowded field. They also tried to connect with voters on a personal level. So I was actually born in South Korea and came here when I was nine years old and I couldn't speak a word of English. There's going to be some dark moments, but you have to remember to uplift and believe myself. And that's when I look back to my family, my grandparents who immigrated from the Philippines. Undoubtedly, when I became a single dad is when my life changed, but it really prepared me to be the, to be the leader in seeking this position that I seek. Go to uh, the situation involving my mother. Uh, as far as I can remember, when I was a young child, she suffered from mental illness. It continued through her adult life uh, through to uh, this day. So if you want to watch even more from last night's debate, we have so much for you posted on our h and digital platforms. Just check it out there. Also wanted to let you know about this programming note. On Monday night, another h and special called The Job Interview. We sit down with the front runners in the race for governor in an in-depth discussion on the issues facing the state. The Job Interview is Monday at 8 p.m. on K5. We'll also stream it on HawaiiNewsNow.com. <music> Breaking news, Steve Bannon, a longtime ally of former President Donald Trump, has been convicted of contempt charges for defying a congressional subpoena from the House Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. He was charged in a two-count indictment. One count was for refusing to appear for a deposition, and the other was for refusing to provide documents in response to the committee's subpoena. The 68-year-old faces up to two years in federal prison when he's sentenced. Each count carries a minimum sentence of 30 days in jail. Meanwhile, bombshell revelations from Thursday's primetime hearing of the January 6th committee. The panel laid out new evidence that President Trump watched the violence unfold on television from the Capitol and yet chose to do nothing. Natalie Brand has more. He betrayed his oath of office and was derelict in his duty. The January 6th Select Committee laid out its case that former President Donald Trump fueled the crowd and then did nothing to stop the Capitol attack in its early hours. We have a clear shot if we move quickly. We got smoke downstairs, set by unknown smoke. The panel played chilling audio of Secret Service agents scrambling to keep then Vice President Mike Pence safe as they feared for their own lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members. The situation was escalating and it was escalating quickly. Live and taped testimony from former White House officials detailed efforts within the White House to get the former president to call off his supporters. That was pretty clear there needed to be an immediate and forceful response statement, public statement that People need to leave the Capitol now. Did you ever hear the vice president, or excuse me, the president no. ask for the National no. Guard? The committee also played never seen before outtakes of the former president's video message later that day when he finally urged supporters to go home while at the same time amplifying false claims of election fraud. And this outtake from January 7th showing Mr. Trump's struggle to concede. This election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the elections are over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the elections are over, okay? I think the, the president certainly has criminal exposure. I'm not a prosecutor, I'm not DOJ. The committee says it continues to receive new information and will hold more hearings in September. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. All right, we want to switch gears now, take you live outside to our beautiful weather. But what is the weekend going to look like? I would tell you, but I forgot to load Guy Hockey's forecast. Oh, no. Yes, but he did say <laughs> it's several days of the best weather on the planet and there is a chance of some tropical moisture moving in as a remnant of that tropical disturbance moves towards the state later in next week. See, I did pretty good. Not bad. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> all right, moving on. Let's see what the interweb is talking about today. Yeah, there's this ginormous 200-pound sea turtle. Oh. Yep, it crashed the beachfront pad of a Melbourne beach, Florida, 
property and then got stuck. That thing is huge. Yeah. Fire crews use their heavy equipment to lift and transport the disoriented turtle back to the ocean. Poor guy. It took about 15 minutes. It's a nesting season there for the turtles, and it's unlikely that he'll probably come that close again and come out of his shell and party there. So Poor pretty guy. safe. He's safe. He's safe. Well, we told you yesterday about Hawaii's jellyfish invasion because of the full moon, but look at this, a oh. massive swarm in Israel. Now, the jellyfish appear in this drone footage as white dots bobbing on the surface of the sea green water while surrounding a boat. Oh my goodness. The gelatinous creatures can be seen for miles. Now, jellyfish are not uncommon in the Mediterranean area, especially in the summer. The stinger to this stunning phenomenon, tormenting tentacles, stings to swimmers, environmental harm to other sea life, and damage to the fishing industry. Now, the jellyfish are expected to be gone by early August. That's insane. Yeah, and lifeguards warning that our jellyfish influx is on right now. So if you're going to the south shores, watch out. You don't want to get stung mm -hmm. by those box jellies. All right, moving on to today's good news now. There's this new video game that lets you be a cat. I might check that out. Yep. I'm sure you will. Yeah, Genie Mose takes a look at it and why it's breaking the internet. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a cat? <laughs> Me neither. But now you can play being a cat in a new video game called Stray that felines themselves seem to think is the cat's pajamas. <laughs> She mostly has ignored video games, but the moment I put this one on, she kind of reacted and ran to the screen to look at it. Still now, she will hop up and try and lick the screen. Which Tamar Hussein is the managing editor at GameSpot, which reviewed Stray and gave it 9 out of 10. In the storyline, the cat falls into an alien world, and you navigate it from the cat's point of view. Leaping on pipes and jumping like a cat on a hot tin roof. There's even a dedicated meow button that players can't resist. Do you feel like a cat? Do you feel like a cat? You start to feel like a cat, which is perhaps his biggest achievement. You suddenly discover the joy that comes from just pushing something on the edge of the table off. The Stray's world is inhabited by robotic humanoids. You solve problems that a real Stray probably couldn't figure out. Actual cats can't keep their paws off the virtual one. And when it disappears, she watches for a second and then thinks the cat is behind the television. So she'll run back around there to look for the cat. Owners beware. Don't you hit that TV. There's even a Twitter account called Cats Watching Stray. So what's he doing? Transfixed. Rocket's a dog. Who needs game reviews when you've got cats voting with their paws? <laughs> Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Very cute, but yeah. the animation's a little freaky. I don't know. They're too real? Too real, maybe. And that meow. I uh -huh. don't know. That's a little sc spooky for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I always think like cat animation, like when they try to do the um, real life looking animation, looks mm -hmm. a little bizarre. Like the movie cats. We've talked the about musical them. cats. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. Uh -huh. All right. That's going to do it <laughs> for this is meow on this Friday. I've been waiting to say that. You know I have. <laughs> Ashley's back first at four on KHNL. Have a fabulous weekend out there. Happy Aloha Friday.